In this screencast, I'm going to talk about the basic nutrients that are necessary for life. So for all of digestion, you're going to have to be looking at screencasts because most of it is self-explanatory. But again, if you have any questions, make sure you let me know in class or by email. So digestion, what is it? It's the breakdown of organic molecules to their component parts. So we're going to take big molecules and make them into small molecules. And those molecules have to be small enough that they can be absorbed from the digestive system into the bloodstream. Nutrients do not do you any good if they stay in your digestive system and come out the other end. So I always say, eat corn, poop corn. Because what happens when you eat corn on the cob or you eat corn, we can't break it down into smaller molecules. So what happens is, you eat corn and it comes out the other end looking like corn, that means you didn't get any nutrients from it. So the key is that you absorb those nutrients. That's the only way they're going to do you any good. Purpose of digestion, every cell in the body needs fuel. So again, we're going to break them down so they can be absorbed into the bloodstream. And the primary area for absorption is going to be the small intestine. Once the molecules get into the bloodstream, they travel through the bloodstream like we've talked about and through the lymph system and they go to the trillions of cells of the body where they are used to make energy or to provide other uh, sources for the cells. The cells are going to use fuel to make ATP. Remember ATP, we've talked about it constantly. We need it to carry out the functions of the cells. We talked about it with muscle cells. We'll talk about it with brain cells and so on. Digestive tract goes from the mouth to the anus. So when you kiss someone, you're actually kissing the far end of their anus. It's also called the alimentary tract. And again, food in the digestive tract is useless if it doesn't get into the cells. This shows you the liver and the pancreas, and these are accessory organs. And they're accessory because the food doesn't travel through them, but they're very important. Their secretions are very important to the digestive process. So let's talk about the fuel nutrients. Now the fuel nutrients are the ones that can be broken down to make energy, or ATP. So when you hear about a food that has calories, it has potential energy. That food can be broken down and you can use those calories, you can use those calories to make ATP. First we have carbohydrates or sugars. Anytime you hear the term carbohydrate, we're talking about a sugar. There are some sugars that are called simple sugars and, and all sugars end in OSE, so whenever you see a word that ends in OSE, you know you're talking about a sugar. A simple sugar is just one molecule. It's called a monosaccharide. So here's an example. Here's glucose. Here's fructose, which is commonly found in fruit. And there is galactose. So they are monosaccharides, one single molecule of sugar. These are the ones you really want to stay away from in your diet. Uh, they tend to cause your insulin to spike and can lead to type 2 diabetes, which I will talk about in a later screencast. Now, what's a disaccharide? Di means two. So we put two monosaccharides together, sucrose being an example. Sucrose, lactose, you should know where lactose is. Lactose is found in dairy products. When someone's lactose intolerant, it means they can't break this disaccharide down into monosaccharides. And I will talk about that later also. Now, complex carbohydrates is when you have a bunch of simple sugars bonded together. They're also called polysaccharides. Starch is how plants store glucose. So when you look at a potato, a potato is a bunch of glucose molecules bonded together, and that's called starch. In order to digest that, you have to eat the potato, break the bonds between each of the glucoses in the potato, those glucoses will then go into your bloodstream because they're small enough and provide your body with energy. Animals store glucose in the form of what's called glycogen. and We can store it in our muscle in our liver. Um, if you look at all cells, not all cells, but you look at muscle and liver cells, you can actually stain the cells and see the storage of glycogen. Athletes, people who are very, very active, they have to store glycogen because they have to store glucose because they're going to need that in order to make energy. Carbohydrates are the preferred fuel of the brain. This is why blood sugar is so critical. Um, if blood sugar is too low, then your nervous system, including your brain, is not going to get the energy it needs. 
but if blood sugar is too high, it can actually do damage to your blood vessels and to your nervous system. And that's where diabetes comes in, and we'll talk about that later. The brain can't function very well on any other fuel. So that's, again, why blood sugar is so important. And muscles can use glucose anaerobically, and we talked about that when we talked about muscles and their sources of ATP. Second type of fuel nutrient are lipids, and fats are a type of lipid. Triglycerides are a type of lipid, a type of fat, and 95% of the fat in your body is triglycerides. So the fat that you have stored is stored in the form of triglycerides. So here we go, here's our glycerol, and here are our, uh, the tri comes from these three strands of uh, carbons, and these are bonds between carbons. So this, is a t this is a simple drawing of what a triglyceride looks like. And there's your fatty acids. So you basically have a glycerol and three fatty acids that make up your triglycerides. Uh, you may know this, but when you get your cholesterol taken, you also get your triglycerides done. Um, if they're too high in your bloodstream, that's not a good thing, because what will happen is these triglycerides can uh, stack on your arteries, especially of your heart, which can lead to heart disease. They have a lot more energy potential than glucose and carbohydrates do because every one of these bonds is potential energy and there's a lot more bonds in lipids in triglycerides than there are in uh, sugar molecules so there's a lot more energy. You may know that one gram of carbohydrates gives you four calories but one gram of fat gives you nine. Um, that means it has a lot more potential energy. It can make a lot more ATP. Now to burn fat, you have to have oxygen present, so you can only burn fat aerobically. And we've talked about this, your heart is going to use fat as a primary fuel. Why? Because it does have so much more potential energy, and your heart needs a constant supply of energy in order to keep beating. But again, to burn it, your heart also has to have a constant oxygen supply, with me, which means it has to have a constant blood supply. And so we, we talked about when you have a heart attack and you, and you decrease the blood flow, the heart muscle cannot function as it should. And again, there's your glycerol and three fatty acids. Now what's the difference between a saturated fat and an unsaturated fat? A saturated fat, the way to remember is sat fats are bad fats. They come from animal sources. And you'll notice here, they're nice and straight, these, three, these fatty acids, which means they can stack on each other like Legos do. And they can stack on each other in your blood vessels, and again, specifically in the coronary arteries of your heart or in the blood vessels of your brain. So that's when you get a fatty buildup. So you want to stay away from saturated fats. Again, they come from animal sources, and you can identify a saturated fat because it's solid at room temperature. So if you take a steak and it's got fat on it, if it sits out, it's still going to stay solid. And these are the kind of fats that you want to stay away from. Unsaturated fats, you'll notice there's some double bonds here between the carbons, so they're kind of kinky looking. And what that means is that they can't stack on top of each other. So unsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature because the molecules can't get close to each other because of these double bonds. And some unsaturated fats, like monounsaturated fats, are actually good for you. And so the recommendations are that you have monounsaturated fats, and those include olive oil, canola oil, those kind of oils are actually good for you. And what they found is diets that are high in unsaturated, especially monounsaturated fats, um, actually makes people healthier. I do this and my dad does too. We both have high cholesterol and we actually, believe it or not, drink olive oil each day. He drinks more than I do. But what we've actually found is that when we supply our body with monounsaturated fats, it actually causes our cholesterol levels to go down. So it's actually a positive thing. We have, fat has this reputation of being bad for you, and in, in some cases, it's actually very good for you. Another type of good fat is omega-3 fatty acids, and these come from fish. And when you look at the diets of some people that live, uh, native Canadians up north, they eat primarily protein and fat. But the fat that they're eating are omega-3 fatty acids and unsaturated fats and they have a very low risk of heart disease. So omega-3 fatty acids are actually very important for you to eat also. All right, I'll show you these videos in class. I don't want to deny you of the joy of watching them. And we will move on to the next 
screencast.